What's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Dummy Wormy. And we're talking about that wonderful, beautiful, just just all around gorgeous, I can't say this with a straight face, low life individual Alyssa Mercante. Now, it was back in May when Alyssa Mercante started threatening legal action on basically anybody who's talking ill about her, specifically Smash JT. When it came to the situation, she threatened him because a random dude started to pretend to be her and pretend to be her sister and started emailing them. Don't support it, but we never got actual receipts for this happening, but these were all the claims. And you ended up having even Smash JT come out and say, hey, I don't condone these actions. I, I don't support it. I never have. It, it's, n it's, it's not something that I'm interested in. Well... We're now getting some shakeup because we come over here. Otaku senior editor Alyssa Mercante claims she is moving forward with legal action against several parties. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's her claim. And I will have to hop over here to the Googles because uh, I don't actually, I, I'm actually blocked by her. But okay. So th this was her tweet that she ended up posting out and, and you see it right here. It's been nearly six months since my Sweet Baby Inc. report and the start of the GG harassment campaign. During this time, I've been gathering info and seeking advice from lawyers and can finally confirm that I'm moving forward with legal action against several parties for doxing, harassment, and defamation. I'm funding this myself, but we'll probably have to create a GoFundMe to help with expenses. Appreciate all your support. Real quick, I, I'm just, I'm going to spoil this for you guys. I, I don't think she has any real legal grounds. What she's doing right now is actually legal harassment herself. I think she's continuing her own major harassment campaign. We'll be tangling a bunch of individuals up in legal troubles, draining their resources because she's a psychopath and thinks the world revolves around her. But she ended up quote tweeting herself and uh, we'll, we'll come over here. Oh, and my lawyers are real familiar with this space. I'm being represented by KUSK Law. You know these guys. And she she points to an article, by the way, that, that, that she wrote called Racist Destiny 2 Player F's around and finds out. So I, I, I decided, you know what? Let's do some digging, shall we? Let's go and see what she had to say. I hop right on over to her uh, little little thing. And I start seeing this. Uh, Jesse James Comer harassed and doxed a Bungie community manager. Now he owes the studio nearly 500K in damages and fees. Now, this story is honestly kind of weird, a, a, a little creepy because uh, she doesn't actually get into uh, some finer details about this whole story. It was put into default. Now, I'm still digging around to try to figure out what's happening, but I can tell you right now, it does look like from my perspective, Jesse Jane Comer's a nut job and probably did do some really, really bad things and probably rightfully so that uh, he lost this. But we're going to come over to game developer real quick because I think they have a better article, but we will hop back over to Kotaku in a moment. But I just, I just need to point this stuff out to you. Destiny 2 player ordered to pay 500k for harassing Bungie developer. The player began a targeted harassment campaign against a Bungie community manager and their family. Wait, what? Family? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, when we keep going through here, we're going to see something interesting. A Destiny 2 player called Jesse James Comer has been ordered to pay almost $500,000 for harassing a Bungie community manager referred to as D. Doe because the studio chose to promote artwork created by a black fan during its May Destiny 2 story community spotlight series. So this story centers around what appears to be an actual racist who went after a Bungie community manager and literally harassed them, like actually went after them, found their phone number, their home address, actually like did heinous things to these people and went above and beyond and did some actual crazy stuff. I'm not denying that part. But I can say is the facts of the story don't really work out that way for Alyssa because the people that ended up suing this guy was Bungie themselves, not D-Doe. 
And then on top of that, what this guy did doesn't really help um, Alyssa so much because uh, a default judgment and order issued on July 11th, 2023 and shared online by Kathy Tucson, who helped Bungie identify the culprit, describes how Comer began a campaign of racist, stochastic terrorism against the studio and Doe. Now that's the key there. He didn't just go after Doe. Now him going after Doe in any way, shape or form was a bad idea because he did go above and beyond, but he also went after the studio. There's a little bit more to the story than what uh, uh, our good, good friend Alyssa ha ha thinks, but it explains how Comer would target Doe by using text now VOIP service to leave hideous, bigoted voicemails to repeatedly ask Bungie to create options in games in which only persons of color would be offed. Yeah, bad idea. Comer also targeted Doe's wife, leaving threatening and frightening voicemails that indicated he knew where they lived and could assault them. Wait a minute. So Comer went after Doe's wife and started messaging Doe's wife. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Because it should sound familiar for Alyssa Mercante in two regards, because when we come back over here to her actual article that she wrote on him, um, you, you, you start scrolling down a little bit, and oh, oh, Comer then started leaving similarly aggressive and racist voicemails for the Bungie employee's wife. So even Alyssa Mercante knows that this guy was going well above and beyond contacting family members, contacting individuals, doing some pretty heinous, nasty things to people, leading a major harassment campaign against individuals. Kind of like what she did, because when we come back over here to that Park Place article, I want to remind everybody about a, a, a little thing that happened. And it, it's not a great picture, so I'll, I'll zoom in, because I want you guys to remember this, this little, little, little shindig that happened that, yes, Alyssa Mercante's kind of try to stifle down the best of her ability, but keeps forgetting that it happened. Never have thought I'd get so much pleasure over at Alyssa Mercante spurging out about me, but here we are. Now she slid into my DMs like, B, I'm married, GTFO here. So you think it's funny that you platformed a man threatening to off me. What was the story? Oh yeah, Alyssa Mercante message Smash JT's wife. Remember that. She went after Smash JT because he talked to somebody that wasn't a fan of Alyssa or whatever. So what does she do? She went after his wife. Wait, wait, where, where have we just heard that? Comer! Wait a minute. Oh, is that all this has done? No, that's not. No, I'm not defending, you know, random individual going after Alyssa's sister or whatever. But he, here's the thing, guys. Uh, there's no real evidence that anybody else did this except Alyssa Mercante's own words. And when we actually go through like more of what Alyssa Mercante's done to smash JT, for example, we got this. Now, this one's more Nick Calandra, but the story started because Alyssa Mercante dropped an entire dock of countless YouTubers talking ill about her and putting out lists of people and then crying that other people put out a list of individuals associated with Alyssa Mercante, Smash JT. So she worked along with the Second Wind CEO guy who is, has his own darkness to him to get his web page taken down and to hurt Smash JT financially. Oh, what else happened? Oh, after celebrating Kotaku Detected being shut down, Alyssa Mercante now claims you can keep your website. It helps. Oh, it helps her, does it? Again, problem with Alyssa is she thinks she's smart. 
because she forgets that people actually have screenshots of what she's done. There's articles about what she's done. There's articles about her actual harassment campaign that keeps going on and the contradictions that keep popping up left, right, and center. But yes, she, she then said, it helps me. It helps me. It helps me paint you guys in a bad light after your whole website came down. You can keep it. Oops, website not detected. Huge shout out to Nick Calandra who reached out to Wix about the site consistently. Follow up. Aw, uh, aw. Uh. And, and, and then obviously we scroll down here. You can keep your website. It helps me. Helps you with your harassment campaign. Oh, what else do we have? Kotaku senior editor Alyssa Mercante passive aggressively attempts to get YouTuber Smash JT canceled from San Diego Comic Con. Remember this one? Oh yeah. She she really tried to get Smash JT canceled from Comic Con because she's evil. She's harassing him. She's constantly going after Smash JT. She hates this man with a burning passion because all he does is make articles about her, talks about her, content, because she's a public person. You're allowed to do that because you also go all over the place promoting yourself as an lead editor or whatever for Kotaku. So you are a public figure. He's allowed to talk about you. And then you have some majorly awful takes online. So then people dunk on you and make fun of you. So now because people have been dunking on you and making fun of you, you're gonna be lawyering up and suing everybody. Well, there's, there's another rich... Alyssa's system because Alyssa's from New Jersey okay she's from New Jersey the, the biggest part about this whole story here the Destiny 2 player is it took place in Washington not DC like the state now Washington state has some very specific laws on the books depicting some of these things some of the things you can and can't do and where, what what's illegal and not illegal I don't know if she actually has standing to do this anymore I don't think she actually has a leg to stand on. I think if this actually goes to trial, uh, more than likely she'll get laughed out of court because this is an entire laughable situation. Because if you're going after Smash JT and trying to say that he's harassing you, all he has to say is, Your Honor, she's a public figure. She's made awful takes online. I have the right to talk about her takes. I have the right to discuss what she has done where she goes. I have evidence to this. I have evidence to back up all these things. I, I, I could, it's easy. And he can also point out the actual harassment campaign that you yourself have been leading on him. He, he'll talk about, he'll acknowledge that you're doing. But he's not trying to take you to court. She ended up hiring the, the, the fir one of the firms that helped take care of this case. I don't know what they actually specialize in, but to, to make matters a little bit worse on this case, is we'll, we'll hop over to this Catherine Tucson uh, Twitter account real quick. Because I, I think this is interesting to say. Because, by the way, Catherine Tucson hates Vic Mignogna. It, it just can't quit talking about Vic Mignogna and that whole case. So you get that little angle. But uh, can confirm she's quote tweeting Alyssa Mercante on th this particular group and the work that they do. Because she's actually a paralegal for them. You can see uh, Mongo here. Uh, has anything happened with the Jesse James Comer lawsuit from last year? What do you mean? She responds. Mongo, have they collected any money from Comer? And here's the funniest part. I don't discuss ongoing proceedings. Sorry. Wait, it was a default judgment. I, I thought you guys got the W. I thought he was supposed to pay out money. Almost like there's more to the story that we're not being given. Almost like there's there's probably more aspects to this. And you guys all ran with this thing. But the reality of the law is deals, movement, changes. And, and, and again, this was a default judgment. Hard to get those unless you don't show up to court sometimes. So there's, there's probably more to this story than meets the eye. But at the end of the day, it is laughable to see Alyssa Mercante even think she has legal standing, legal grounds, and she could actually win a lawsuit against Smash JT. What this is, at the end of the day, is no more than actual legal harassment. This is her choosing to go after the people she dislikes with legal means, legal actions, hold them up in the courts, drain their money that way, Make them suffer that way because she's a psychopath that just won't let up and will just keep going after people that she doesn't like because she always has to be top dog. She always has to be center of attention and she can't handle 
being made fun of. We'll see how this all plays out, but I don't think it's going to work too well in her favor. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.